It is one American born writer, Judy Seidman, who describes the horrific event that it was the certainty of their defeat that drove them to the massacre. On the morning of the 9th December 1982, 30 South Africans and 12 Basutu nationals were killed and most of them in their sleep. In the week that sees an official memorial service of the last apartheid, President F.W. Dittleck, many share mixed feelings to his legacy. Apparently it benefited much, maybe from the, from the Cold War. So the end of Cold War has also brought some kind of uh, an opportunity to dismantle the system. So you, you, it's actually controversial to be saying he was willingly honest that he wanted to, to, to recognize the, the black majority in South Africa. So the, the, the fellow comrades who, who died and were, were, were arrested here, some were of course were removed and taken back to their home, their home country. They died, and their kids or their children, expression of we are also human beings. We are scamming out those that who saw catastrophe and the tragedy of that massacre. So commemorating this day, it means that we are actually resuscitating and reigniting the relationship that we have with South Africa. If blood has been shed, it means there is that bond, there is that uh, permanent relationship. But unfortunately... While progress has been made, still 2021, we see the right of the people violated because they belong to a different race, they belong to a different ethnicity, they don't have our same color, they have a physical impairment because of their status or condition. As the month of December is internationally acknowledged as the Human Rights Month across many spheres, much dialogue is yet to take place if true reconciliation or forgiveness can take place. And to some, F.W. D. Clark's recent apology will for some time come to raise heated debate. Yeah, it was strange actually for me why D. Clark himself waited until he was no longer there to make the apology. I think the apology would have meant a lot if he did it maybe during the TRC or he made the apology at a time when everybody was looking for answers and wanted a voice which would make them to feel like their next of kin, their loved ones didn't die in vain. Moloto further applauds a recent signing of the long-awaited bilateral cooperation between Lesotho and South Africa. He says its escalation to the level of premiers will accord it the weight it deserves. If you listen to many of us, they feel that if the issue of immigration and uh, the border movement, uh, the movement across the border is attended to and dealt with the way they feel, they think more than 70-80% of the bilateral relations between the two countries will be sorted out. We hope and trust that the elevation of these uh, uh, relations would focus on that issue and make the movement between the two countries more simpler and easier. Lesotho and South Africa may become the first countries in Africa to agree on free border movement between its citizens while maintaining their sovereignty. President Ramaphosa and Lesotho Prime Minister are expected to officially launch the bilateral cooperation in the first quarter of 2022. Rabelang Khadebe, SABC News, Maserolusu.